preparation for acceleration. And if you got your handouts, if you didn't get it, you could raise your hand and I'm going to pray. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would give us today the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Let it flow freely and unhindered by any demonic force. Every distraction I take authority over. I command the anointing of God to flow freely and unhindered. Lord, release your angels to bring a stillness that we may receive the word of the Lord. And let us leave this place saying, I encountered the presence of God. Lord, let nobody leave the way they came in. Do what only you can do, how you can do it. We ask you to release great grace in this atmosphere. They didn't come to hear the voice of a man. They've come to hear a word from heaven. So we receive receive now the words of God in Jesus name and all of God's people that believe give them one more shout of praise <laughs> hallelujah you know I believe today's message I'm gonna kind of prep it before we get into it um, this is really geared toward lifestyle of freedom students and it's geared really to everybody but um, as I'm gonna teach some subjects these are going to be subjects that we teach in Lifestyle of Freedom. We teach in Bible College. And these are going to be some heavy things I'm going to bring up. So what I'm going to ask you not to do is fight me in the spirit. Because what happens sometimes is when God speaks, the Bible says the people of God always want to kill the prophets of God. Because every time the prophet of God comes, he speaks on another level. And when we find ourselves not living at that level and we don't see any way naturally we can get to that level, then we fight the words of God. And we end up fighting our future because your future is in the mouth of your prophet. And when God, come on. And when God gives you a prophet and he, that's God talking to you and that's why the scripture is clear in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 that if you obey the prophet of God then you will begin to prosper because the prophet of God is not saying his own words he's the mouthpiece for God telling you what God is saying and even though your life may not look like what God said it can look like by faith you have to say it can happen even though I don't see how it can happen I don't feel like I can happen the devil a liar if you get a word from God that word can come to pass somebody shout like we're going to receive the word of the Lord today so I'm going to be preaching at another level for most people in this room lifestyle of freedom is going to hear me a lot of people that come to church here are going to hear me some of you are going to be like whoa that's a lot but I'm going to encourage you come higher in your thinking because God is no respecter of person. If he did it for one person in this room, he'll do it for you. It don't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter if you've lost everything. You serve Jehovah Jireh. He's the God that can provide. And he's Jehovah that's more than enough. Come on, shout like your God is able. Preparation for acceleration. And the reason you, you have to say that, because so many people want to accelerate in their life. They want to accelerate in the relationships. They want to accelerate in their finances. They want to accelerate in every arena of life. They want to accelerate in their ministry. They want to accelerate in their leadership. They want to accelerate in their destiny. Everybody wants to accelerate because God put that inside of you. Because God is fast. And God wants to bless you fast, quick, and in a hurry. And when God decides to turn up the blessing thermometer on your life, baby, you better be ready because if you ain't ready, you can crumble under the weight of the acceleration of God's goodness. Who's getting ready for more of the goodness of God? So I really believe this is a, a prophetic word for 2022, but I felt released to share it today. Somebody say, number one, write this down. God molds us. For future glory. And we, and we study that word glory. It comes from the Hebrew word kabod. It means heavy. It means weighty. It means prosperity. It means abundance. It means blessing. And that represents the ark of God or the ark of the presence of God. It represents the goodness of God. And that's when God wants to hit you with so much goodness. 
I mean, I'm telling you, when God gets done with you, it'll feel like you're living in a dream. When you look where you come from and you see where God's taking you, your future will feel like you're in a dream. Some of you come out of a nightmare. As bad as that nightmare of a life was, that's how good your future can be when God hits you, when he hits you with glory. In 1 Samuel 22, 1 and 2, we find the molding of God taking place in the life of David's men. You find these men starting off at one level of life, but by the time they were done with the ministry of David and the anointing that God put on David and the grace that God put on David, you see, when God raises a leader or a minister or a ministry, he does a work in the minister and in the minister. And then what he does is he begins to multiply that in the people. So if God set the minister free, before you know it, the people are experiencing that level of freedom. David had gone through the fire. David had gone through the flood. David had gone through the pain. David had gone through the rejection David had gone through the molding because David was prepared for the glory of God and now God is sending him 400 men that don't look blessed but by the time David gets done with them they look blessed and highly favored because they were molded for greatness who's come on who's gonna allow God to mold you for greatness in 1st Samuel 22 it says David escaped to the cave of Adullam and all those who were, now I want you to lean into this, say in distress, number one, or in debt, number two, or discontented or bitter of soul, number three, gathered around him. I love that, that they gathered around him. That David didn't say, oh, we're going to have a niche ministry and we're not going to take the distress. We're not going to take the grossly indebted. We're not going to take the bitter and the jacked up folk. No, David was like freedom. Bring in the hurting, bring in the lost, bring in the broken. Because when this anointing gets done with you, baby, you will never be the same again. Come on, lifestyle of freedom. Act like I'm telling the truth. And they gathered around him and he became their commander. And about 400 men were with him. It's interesting. These were not soldiers. These were broke, busted, and disgusted men. These were men that had failed in relationship. Oh, and they failed time and time again. They were bitter at life. They had no financial resource. They were shattered. But when the anointing of God got into their life. The anointing did what the anointing is called to do. When the anointing of God shows up in your life, it removes every burden, it destroys every yoke, it breaks every limitation, and it elevates you into the destiny that God had preordained for your life. Somebody shout like you're walking into an anointing. And we find that God brings them these men to be molded, molded for future glory, molded for greatness, because that's what God does. He doesn't just bless your life. He first has to mold our lives because if God turns up the acceleration of blessing and we're not ready, then we're, then we're not qualified to carry the glory of God. So God has to prepare us and he has to deliver us and he has to heal us and he has to strengthen us. So when he turns up the speed, we can handle the velocity of the goodness of God. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about because you've never been hit by the goodness of God. But I prophesy in the days, weeks, months, and years to come, you're going to be hit with goodness like you ain't never seen. Somebody shout like you believe there is a place called the goodness of God. And it is in the land of the living. You trace the, the methodology of God. You trace the, the strategies of God. God never accelerates blessing until he molds his men. Moses was molded for 40 years in a wilderness. Joshua was molded for 40 years in his own wilderness. 
David was molded for 25 years. Joseph was molded for 17 years. Paul was molded for 17 years. Jacob was molded in the, in the house of Laban. And they all had one thing in common. They had greatness upon their lives. And if there is greatness upon your life, then your next step is to get prepared for what God wants to elevate you into. It's hard to teach this next generation this principle because everybody wants the blessings fast. Everybody wants things to turn around overnight. But you didn't get in a mess overnight and God can't build a great foundation overnight. So when God wants to build a big house, he's got to go down deep. You don't build skyscrapers with no foundation. And as high as God's going to accelerate you, then we have to look at the foundation. Because if God puts too much weight on your foundation and your foundation's not ready, your foundation will crack underneath the pressure and the weight of that goodness. Somebody ought to say, mold me, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jeremiah said it this way. Oh, no, I got another word. God told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, I'm going to do a great work, but the way I do it, I have to uproot. I have to tear down. And then I have to build and then plant. What's God saying? God said, when I come into somebody's life, I don't just start blessing them. I got to get in there and I got to get out of them everything I never put in them. And if you fight that process, you're fighting acceleration. If you fight that process, you're fighting your future glory. That's why I've learned to have an appetite for change. I'm almost 50 years old, but I'm still hungry for change. I want to be I want to be a better pastor. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better leader. I want to be a better business owner. Come on, clap like you want to be better. Hmm. Hmm. In Jeremiah 18, <laughs> Jeremiah is giving an illustration of a potter with pottery and how he molds the pottery for purpose. And how many know that's what God is in our life? He's the potter and we're the clay. And the clay doesn't say to the potter, you mold me the way I want you to mold me because the clay doesn't know their future. But the potter knows the future for the clay. And so we have to trust God in the process. Come on, lifestyle of freedom. <laughs> Some people get on the potter's wheel and then they want to jump off. When it gets, everything starts spinning. Because when God starts delivering you of childhood trauma and he starts delivering you and I of things we went through and false personalities and alter egos and he starts setting you free from things that have been in your life for 30 years, you feel like you're, you're in a whirlwind. But if you just stay on the potter's wheel, I don't know who I'm talking to. But some of you have just gone through a season like this and then the wheel is going to stop. He's going to pull you out and he's going to use you in a mighty way. Shout like you understand what I'm saying. I love the way Jeremiah said it. He said, I went down to the potter's house. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got to go down to the potter's house. You don't come up to the potter's house. When you're going to go to the potter's house, you got to come down. You can't be high-minded. You can't be arrogant. You can't be prideful. You can't think you're God's gift to a church. When, uh, when, when, you, when you're going to get molded for another level, you got to get down to the potter's house. You got to be willing to stay small in your own eyes. And I saw him working that wheel. And the pot was shaping from the clay. But the clay was marred. It was defected. So he had to form it into another pot. Shaping it as it seemed best to him. And that's what happened to these men. They went to David and, and they were not qualified to fulfill their destiny in distress, in discontentment, and in debt. So they had to go on the potter's wheel in the cave with David and they had to be smashed down so they can be rebuilt up. And nobody wants to be smashed down. But if you don't get smashed down from your own opinion that it's not God's will, then you'll never step up. Come on, clap like you know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to give you three areas that we need to allow God to smash us down so he can build us back up. The first area, it says these men were in distress. Say distress. Oh God. It means they were in a narrow place. They were in confinement and they had disabilities. <laughs> Don't shut down on me. <clears throat> but if God's going to raise you, he has to get away from you and I and remove from us negative thinking and narrow-minded thinking. And sometimes the first thing he has to do is remove you from narrow-minded, arrogant, bigot fools. Three claps and an amen, but I'm going to go somewhere. Just track with me, baby. He has to remove you from your thinking, confined thinking, limited thinking, low-level thinking, poverty mentality, and emotional disabilities. Because God can't pour new wine into old wine skins. Or he can't put new blessing, accelerated blessing into old mentalities. Lest he do it and it breaks. Because old wine skins, they're not moldable. They're not shapeable. And the older they get, the more hardened they become. And this is why sometimes if you're not careful, the older you get, you become more stuck in your ways where when God wants to do something new, he has to bypass you because you're too old in your thinking. And your own mind has disqualified you for what God wants to do next in your life. Narrow thinking. You see, physically, in your brain, 
as you grow older, you begin to grow, grow grooves in your brain of thinking. And the older you get and you have certain belief systems, doesn't mean they're gods. The grooves get deeper. And you start living out of a behavior where you don't even have to really think about it. Subconsciously, it's who you are now. When you come to God, he wants to reset those grooves. That process is painful. Because everything in you says go left. But God says, your blessing is not left. Your blessing is right. That's why they say it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. It's true in the natural. People don't change. Even church folk don't change unless they're willing to get on the potter's wheel. Come on, lifestyle of freedom. I'm talking to you. And they're willing to stay on the potter's wheel so he can transform the way you and I think so we begin to think on another level. Therefore, God can now bless us on another level. You see, church, we must allow God to break small-minded, no-faith, victim mentality. Emotional disabilities. We begin to wear them like a badge. This is why I can't come up. This is why I can't be great. And every time somebody challenges us, we flip out our disability. I was dropped. I was abused. Don't, don't talk to me like that. My daddy left me. Don't, don't make me... And sometimes even, even, I don't want to hurt nobody's feeling. <laughs> you, 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 and I don't want, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be mean, but see my skin color is brown, right? Some of you are a little darker brown, right? And, 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 and they say, and, and sometimes our disabilities, you know why I can't come up? Because my color. It's my color. It's my color. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I break something off you? The, the man's keeping me down. Can, can, I, can I break something off to you? Nobody, and I mean nobody, and I mean nobody can keep you down. Because I read in my Bible that if God is for you, then tell me. Somebody ought to shout like I'm breaking that emotional. They try to put that on me. Oh, you've been to prison. Oh, you a drug addict. Oh, you so broke you can't pay attention. Oh, you can't go back to college. You're stupid, Jay. You ain't got no kind of sense. Who do you think you are? And I had to fight that limited mentality. I had to fight Pharaoh's mentality. And I had to break out because God wanted to take me to another level. Shout like you're going to another level. Yeah, I've been victimized. Over and over and over again. Yeah, I've been broken. Yeah, I've been shattered. Yeah, I've been left. Yeah, I've been abused. But God told me, you are not what you went through. You are what I say you are. And I say, you're a child of El 
El Shaddai. You're a child of the Most High God. And I surrounded myself with low level, limited people because you attract who you are. And when I got into the church, those same folk are in the church. And God said, stop hanging around with them and go hang out with them. And I said, but Lord, I feel weird with them. They got like good families. They got like education. They like drive nice cars. They, they, got, they got their life in order. I, I, I get around them. I feel insecure. I hear a voice saying, you're stupid. You don't belong here. But you got to fight through those voices, baby. And you got to say, I belong at this table. Because my daddy put me at this table. Come on, Mephibosheth. My daddy put me, yes, underneath this table. I got broken legs. But my daddy put me at this table. And I ain't let no devil move me out of my table. Somebody ought to shout like I'm preaching. I had to be willing to not allow my disability. And I have real disabilities. When I got saved, I couldn't read and I couldn't write. And I couldn't talk. Those were real disabilities in my physical body. But I didn't allow my inability to read. And I didn't allow my inability to talk. I didn't allow that to stop me. Because when you get a word from God and you get around people who believe in you, you listen to God and you listen to them. You listen to God and you listen to them and get rid of every hateful, come on somebody, every, every low level thinking person who says you can't and you failed and you ain't gonna make it. The devil is a filthy liar. I gotta move on. Mm hmm it says in the scripture that again and again they tempted God because they limited him. And I looked at the word limiting. This is crazy. I'm going to ask you to do something. You might not feel too comfortable, but just, just, just can you do this for me? Just push against your neighbor like that. And if you know them real good, give them the, you know, the, like the one you do at home. You know what I mean? You know, Sergio got my mom over here. You know, you can't put, but my mom's crazy, Sergio. She'll hit you, doc. She come from the, you, you give him another push. Come on. Uh. And God says, that's what Israel did to him. Every time he tried to bless them, they pushed against him. Every time he tried to bless them, they provoked him. Every time he tried to bless them, they grieved him. They hurt him. See, it hurts God. When we identify more with our disability and our emotional disability and our wound than we identify with his promise over our lives. Because God knows even though I, I can bless you, I have the power to bless you, I have the ability to bless you, if I can't change your thinking, if I bless you, you can't handle it. Can I say a big word? Can I give you a big word? Because your blessing is not connected to your external. Your blessing is connected to your internal. And as you think, you become. You go into certain environments, and when you begin to feel like you want to be in that environment, you know God wants you in that environment. And then when you get in that environment, Everything in you says, get out of here because you don't belong here. Well, you have to learn how to stay there afraid. You have to be willing to stay there and you don't feel like you belong there. But you got to stay there and the time's going to come where you're going to step in that environment and you're going to realize that insecurity is gone because now it's who you are. Because the word changed you from the inside out.
I got to move on. Number two. Number two. Can we go deeper? I don't know if you're ready. Some of you are already choking on that level. Come on, lifestyle. You sure? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I'm gonna be gentle. I don't want to hurt nobody. You sure? All right. All right. Let's go. Number, number three. Write this down. All those. Oh, man, look at this word. Oppressed with debt. You got to conquer the money. See, no, uh, see that? You see that? You felt that? There he goes. Talking about money. That's part of your problem right there. If your preacher can't talk about money, you ain't going nowhere. Yes, sir. I said, yes, sir. If, you're, if you limit your preacher to preach only what you want, you're just like Israel killing the prophets. Always killing the prophets. Are you a prophet killer? Or are you a receiver of the word of God? Who's ready to come out of oppressive debt? Because the scripture says, let me give you some Bible. The rich rule the poor, but the borrower, look at this word, is a slave to the lender. You ain't a slave. Because the scripture said, who the son sets free is free indeed. So we're going to deal with one level of debt right now. Oppressive debt. Slavery debt. The kind of debt you get into that when they gave you that credit card, they knew they owned you. And they sent you to work every Monday. So at the end of your paycheck, they want their 21, 28%. Oh, Pharaoh don't like me right now. See, I'm quite, I don't want to hurt you. I'm just going to be gentle here. Now there's what I call regular debt. And then there's strategic oppressive debt. Like you buy a house in California this month, 10 years from now, you bought it for 600, it's worth 800, 900,000. So yeah, that's a debt, but you actually made money off your debt. So that's not oppressive. Better to pay mortgage than a rent. So that ain't that bad. Pay that house off and believe that the next one, you pay it off cash. Why not? But that's not oppressive. That, that debt's making you money. Or take your equity and buy another house and sell it or rent it or Airbnb it and make some money off it. That, that's not necessarily oppressive debt. That's not what I'm talking about. These men were in oppressive debt. The kind of debt that you can't even pay attention. That you look at your money and you say, we ain't never coming out of this. And I think there's maybe one or two of you here that I'm talking to right now. It's the kind of debt that I got introduced to at Rio Hondo College. And I ain't hate on Rio, but this is what happened. I got there, and they said, they were there, little dad said, hey, you want a credit card? I said, credit card? I was half high. They're gonna get me a credit card. (laughs) I ain't even got a real ID. Come on, somebody. Credit card, yeah, yeah. How much? A thousand dollars, you only have to pay like so much a month. I said, yeah, give me that. I went and bought me some Dickies. Tells you where I was. Some tank tops. 
a belt, and some Doritos. I went back to that table. Free money. You say, you want another question? Yeah. How much? 2500 I said, come on, somebody. And little by little, little by little, I became a slave. And then you start getting hit with that 21% interest. Now, nowadays, man, I heard this last 28% interest. Sergio over here shook his head like, oh, Lord. that's how people are feeling right now. Just like that. You smiling. You got a nice dress on, but that, tr- that dress is on credit. <laughs> Somebody got that Louis Vuitton purse. Walk around. $1,500 purse, right? By the time you're done paying for that purse, girl, that purse costs five grand. <laughs> and here's the problem. We go on Instagram. Oh, look at her. Oh, sh- oh, uh, how can I get that? Uh, well, I got this car. Well, that's a big deal. It, it's, it's important, so psh, I'll pay it back. You know, I'm going to put a tape right here and a shocker. And every time you try to use that credit card and you go like that, it's going to shock you. Some of you gonna come in here all, all jacked up next week. What happened? I'm just getting delivered. I'm getting delivered, Pastor. So, you, do you wanna get out of that? No? Then I'll go to another, I'll preach tonight. Do you wanna get out of that? Cycle, man. You gotta get out of that. All right. It starts with this. You are not what you wear. You are not what you drive. And you are not where you live. You are God's son. And that's enough. Because if you don't deal with that root. You. you. You good? I remember when I was coming up financially, I'd buy a car and I drove that thing until it blew up. I've blown up at least three cars, three trans, one car, I, 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 I drove it so hard, the engine fell out. And I had to tow the mechanic and the mechanic's like, it's, it's incurable. I said, you little faith, you have little faith. Because CarMax jacked me up. They're like, we'll give you a car. Oh, a nice car. That 28% interest. I didn't even look at that. I could afford that payment. Man, I ended up paying triple for that car. I learned my lesson. So I just drive until I break them. I had had a a Lincoln LS, and that thing broke every year. But I take it back. Three transmissions on that, and, I, and the convention, the engine fell, and the mechanic, but, and I, but man, I made it look nice. But I learned to take care of what I have. Like the other day, I went up, I have, I have a pair of Gucci's. They bought me 12 years ago. These, these Gucci's, I was about to give them away to somebody, but then I looked and I said, not yet, Lord. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they still look new, but they're in the bar. I take care of them because I learned that. But I realized years ago, coming up, I'm not my car. I'm not my Gucci. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Don't hate. Celebrate. I, I'm not what I drive. I'm not where I live. I'm none of those things. I'm God's son. And if you don't get a hold of that, you'll try to compete with somebody over here. You'll try to compete with them. You'll try to go over here. Try, especially if you're single and you're trying to get married, you'll start faking it. You'll, and we got to get rid of this false prosperity. Buying shoes on credit, buying cars on credit. Now, no, let me say it this way. You could buy a car on credit, but if you have a car and it's still working and you're just getting another car because you want to compete with somebody, the devil's a liar. You drive your car until that thing breaks and then you go get a car you can afford. See, nobody want to hear me, but see, that's not how we were raised. Am I hurting you yet? You good? 
Yes or no? How many are ready to come out of oppressive debt? Next thing you need to do, you need to learn your covenant rights. You have a right to be out of debt, oppressive debt. And I believe we can get to a level where we can come out of debt completely. That's a high level of faith. It's able. It's a promise. We can get there. It takes time. It takes generations. But I believe we can get there. How many believe we can get there? But that, I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about oppressive debt. Because it's the oppressive debt that holds back your destiny. Because you can't focus on the kingdom when you, you, you can't even pay that 28% off. You're a slave. And you got to get free. And the son came to set you free. But you got to be willing to change. Quiet. It's okay. I'm going to keep going because I'm already too deep in. Who's still believing? I, 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 I lost the pool. Look at that. The pool's gone. Look at that. The pool. You still pooling? You still pooling? All right. Can I go deeper? You got to learn your covenant rights. You literally have a right to be the lender and not the borrower. To be above only and never again beneath. You have a right to the blessing of Abraham. The same blessing God gave to Abraham, you have a right to. You have to learn the laws of giving and receiving. God's system. If you don't tithe, you ain't ever coming out of bondage. Don't rush me. I'm going to slow down now. You're trying to put a rush on me. No, man, we ain't performing. You got to get this. Listen, people come to me and my wife he, for years. We've been doing this 20 years now. I've been, I've been preaching almost 30 years. I'm going to be 50 years old. And we come, they come struggling, like struggling, like, man, can't pay our mortgage, can't pay this. And my wife sit with them hours, do all their bills, and, and they, they couldn't tithe. And we looked at it. wait a minute, you're wasting so much money, you could be tithing three times. And, and then you could save this and you could do that. But because they had wrong thinking, they couldn't discipline themselves. And this is 10, 15 years ago. They're in worse financial status now than they were then. And if they would have just listened, they would have came out. They would have come out. They would have been way out. They would have been so far out, but they couldn't change their thinking. Because no one ever parented them right. No one ever set them and taught them how to save money and do it. No one ever taught. So when Pastor Liz tried to do it, because they, they were undisciplable. And if you're going to come out of bondage, you got to learn how to be accountable to somebody. You don't hear me. So if, if you're married and your wife has a problem with this, and you have a problem with this. How do you know you have a problem? Look at your bills. Who is in your life to stop you? You come to church. You can shout. You can scream. But who's discipling you? And some of you are like, man, don't tell me what to do. I'm already 53 years old. But look at your debt. I'm hurting you, honey. I'm hurting you. I'm, hurting. I'm so sorry. I, I don't apologize. Because somebody's going to talk to you like this at some point. So you got to start giving. And then you got to get accountable. And, if you, and then you got to get a strategy. You got to get a system. Then you got to get wisdom. And you got to work that wisdom. You got to work it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like a robot. Thursday, Friday. Week after week, month after month, year, like a robot, like a robot. You look back, and then the blessing hits you. The miracle hits you. The favor hits you, and you're way out of debt. You're so far from debt, you can't even see it. And now you're ready to be a blessing. All right. You want some more? What do you think, babe? Some more, more or no more? I love my wife. You know my wife? Look at your wife. She's here. Tell I love you. Brother, you should have listened to me right there. I'm trying to hook you up right here. I'm trying to help a brother out. He's a, 
What's up? I love you, girl. No, you got to be like, girl, I love you. Okay, I got to come back now. Okay, somebody give God a praise. I'm, I'm going to keep, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this. Can I give you a little bit more or no? No? I got a mixed reaction here, you know what I mean? I'm going to just go for it. I'm just going to go for it. All right. How many want to come out of debt and prosper? All right, let's look, let's look at here. Say, now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elijah replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me what do you have in your house? And your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of oil. And Elijah said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour oil into the jars as each is filled. Put it on one side. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons, and they brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. And when all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another jar. But he replied, there's no more jars left, mom. Then the oil stopped flowing. Then the oil stopped flowing. The prosperity stopped when, the, when, the, when there was no more room for it. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt, and then you and your sons will live on what's left. There's two keys here I want to show you. The first key is narrow-minded thinking will never allow you to see your potential. Now I'm going to preach higher, but that's okay. Because some of you are here just, Pastor, I'm just trying to stop smoking weed. I know. I'm going to get you. But I got to talk to everybody. Come on, somebody. I, I, I got you. Don't worry. I'll land with you. But I got to talk to everybody here. The first thing you have to recognize, because limited thinking won't let you see it, because if Pharaoh did his job right in your life, he beats you up so much, and you went through so much oppressive debt and, and, all, and this kind of circumstances where you don't see your gifting or your talent. And this is what happened to this woman. Elijah says, God's going to give you a miracle, a financial miracle. You're going to get out of debt, and not only out of debt, you're going to have enough to live on. Okay? First thing though, what's in your house? That represents your talent and your gift. Mm. Some of you have one talent. Bible says that. Some of you have three. Some of you have five. But you got to find, just start with one. Oh God. You're going to love this. This is why we, we started Freedom Christian Academy. Because our goal like my children, I'm looking at them now, and I've been looking at them for years, and I even named them. Before they were born, I named them based on their gift. I, I'm to Wait a minute. Just because no one named you when you were born don't mean you can't do it for your children. Don't be selfish. Learn what I'm telling you for your kids, kids, kids. Come on, come higher. You got it. You got it. So I look at all my children, and I look at them, and, and I raised them, and I'm raising them based on their talent. Because every one of them has talents. And I recognize, I'm going to make sure you get educated in the area of your talent. Why, why are you going to educate an artist in accounting if he can't count for nothing? but he's a creator. You got to get him out of that school. You got to put him in this school because when he learns how to work that thing, that'll make him a multimillionaire. I'm in the wrong place. Come on, say, come higher, come higher, come higher. Oh, Lord. I'm so big on this where this is how we've built this ministry. I, I want to know what, who are you and what do you carry and what do you have? Because I need you to bring something to the table that I can't bring. 
God gave you something and they didn't give me. I need you to bring what you got and you 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 bring what you got and I'll bring what I got. We got a team, now we can take some land. What do you have in your house? And, and what's her, what's her next, what, what does she voice next? Watch me, this is what we do to God. And this is where people fight you in the spirit. I have nothing in the house. Why? That debt crushed her. All her creativity was gone. When you're in oppressive debt, all your creativity is gone. That's why it's so important to create an environment like lifestyle of freedom and church this, this way. So you come in and it breaks off of you what you were in and now you can begin to create again. You can innovate again. You can dream again. You can hear God and say, you know what? I am what God said I am. I'm not oppressive debt. I am somebody created in the image of God. Can I give you one more thing? How many want to get out of debt? Oppressive debt. How many want to prosper? All right, one more thing. When I talk to our people, we have a lot of business leaders. We have a school of business here. And we're getting ready to do something real big in the next year where Jesus name, say Jesus name. It's already set up. We just gotta, we gotta, we're gonna set it up for our training centers and those that want it, where you could graduate with a BA in business or a nonprofit if you do it right with minimal to no debt. See, I, I, am I preaching too high for you? Come on, because some of you never, some of you ne had nobody in your, your family graduated high school. We're talking about AA, BA, and master's debt free. Never heard of it. Stop thinking small. God is able. God is able. God is able. God is able. We want our people to come up. Okay, you were a drug addict. Okay, you were left. Okay, you were dropped. Now, what are you going to do? So, you ready for more? I'm going to keep giving. So we have one, 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 one girl just graduated college this morning. And she opened up her shop this, this month. Beauty salon. And I said, how many chairs do you have? She said, four. I said, that's how much God's going to prosper you. I said, do you want God to give you more? Because God has no problem giving you more. But you're going to have to find a way to God give you a strategy. When are you going to get four more chairs? Because you get four more chairs, the oil will keep. Come on, the oil. The oil will keep flowing. Who's ready to multiply? Who's ready for the oil to keep flowing? Who's ready for the increase of God? All right. God says this, I will, look at your hands, look at your hands, look at your hands. Those are good looking hands. And talk to yourself better. Some of you put your eyes in this stubby little short, I hate my skinny finger. Stop talking bad about yourself. Come on somebody, stop looking, I, I hate my nose. And I, Stop that, you're beautiful, you're amazing. You're made in the image of God. Stop all that crazy talk. Look at your hands. Say, look at my hands. Say, my hands are industrious. My hands are blessed. And God Almighty. You're not, okay, let me give you the Bible. Hold on, let me give you the Bible. Look at your hands. Say, the Lord. Look at your hands. We'll, we'll send rain at the proper time from his rich treasury. See, I can't preach this word. You ain't ready for this level, man. Let me read the Bible. 
Bible. Look at your hands. Say, the Lord will send rain at the proper time. When? At the proper time. What if he sends the rain too early? It'll do nothing. You'll waste the blessing. At the proper time from his rich treasury. What does God's treasury look like? Don't get spiritual on me. See, right? We got one real spiritual. No, no, no. He's talking about natural. It going from heaven to earth. That's what God wants to release. Mm. In the heavens. Read with me. Look at your hands. Say, and I will. Looking at your hands? I will. God says, I will. Bless all the work you do and you will lend to many nations and you will never need to borrow from them again shout like these hands are industrious hands I need somebody that's ready to come out of debt ready to come out of poverty ready somebody jump up and shout like you're ready stay standing if you're not standing I'm gonna ask you to stand give yourself a big hand you did well uh, help us Lord huh Come on, say, help us, Lord. Part of the name of this church is Freedom City Church, right? So freedom means a life without limit. So part of my assignment from God for you is to get you out of the bondage you've come through. But then it's to take you from Pharaoh's house into the promised land. From making bricks to owning bricks. Come on, clap like you're an owner. I release, lift your hands, I'm about to release something. I release the spirit of ownership. I release the ownership anointing. I release that now. Shout like you believe God. And I got to close with this. Stay standing, please. Number four. Not only those that were in distress, narrow, confined, emotionally disabled, not only those in poverty and oppressive debt, but the last group says they were discontented and I looked up the word in the Hebrew and it means they had troubled minds and they had bitter souls and they were bitter about life they were the abused and why did God send them to David because David faced the spirit of rejection his father rejected him his brothers rejected him even the prophet of God didn't believe in him. His leader tried to kill him. But David decided, I'm not going to get bitter. I'm going to get better. I feel it. He's a chain breaker. Can I testify a little bit? And what I'm about to say next, it's going to be the heaviest thing I've said all night, all day here. Because I'm, I'm about to drop a heavy word. And if this ain't you, you don't understand it. But if you've been through it, you understand what I'm saying. You're going to have to learn to forgive those who violated you, who abused you, 
who talked behind your back, who cheated on you, who left you, literally left you for dead. Some of them fools buried you and they thought you'd never come back. Huh. Here you are, or here you is, and here you be. Ah, oh, Lord, have mercy on our soul. My daddy left me when I was about that big. Six, seven, eight. Broke me, man. I love my daddy. I still love him. I never talked to him. I'm 47, 40 years. He just left me. Broke me. And if I cry, let me cry. I'm not hurt. I'm just grateful that even though your father may leave you, Papa will take care of you. And then he'll bring you into a family that will take care of you. I feel something moving in the room right now, my friend. So I turn to my stepfather. He was, he was a bigot. And I'm not against white people, to hear me. I, I mean, I love, I, right here, I don't play. If you white, you black, you brown, you Asian, you yellow, like my kids all mix, and I see racism here, I'll kill that thing. Ain't no one better than nobody here. I ain't playing. But, so don't, hear my heart. Come on, somebody. I, that's a narrow-minded, ain't going nowhere kind of thinking. Come on, shout like I'm talking. But he was a bigot. And he didn't like Mexicans. And I was a Mexican. So he'd always put Mexicans down all the time. And then he didn't like me. I think I reminded him of my father. So he'd always tell me, you're short. Like that's something wrong with being short. I'm short and proud now. God wanted me taller. He'd have made me taller. Come on, somebody. I'm cool. He told me stupid. He called me ugly. He called me nasty names. And he wouldn't do it like once in a while. He would do it every day, all day. And he would abuse me every day, all my childhood. By the time I was 14, I was so bitter. I was a killer. I ran these streets like a maniac. And he would have looked at me and you said, this stupid kid, throw him away, lock him away. He's an idiot. He's a waste of life. But they didn't see my pain. Don't judge people. Don't judge them. Don't, you see a homeless man? You see somebody? Man, don't just throw them away and judge them. God can restore them if they let them. Ooh, I feel something in the room, baby. Come on, clap like God can restore. I said God can and will restore. When all my friends were going off to play football and proms, I was being shackled, sent to youth prison, in and out, in and out of jail, just waste of life. But one day, I came to a service like this, and I felt something I never felt. I felt the love of God. And I remember a tear rolled like that and I hadn't cried since my dad left me and I said oh man what's happening like voodoo or magic what's going on here I didn't know about God and all that stuff you know but I knew I want more of that and I ran from the Anaheim Pond I was in the Anaheim Pond the top bleacher I ran to the front and I gave my life to Jesus that day but you know what the problem was I didn't, no one taught me how to not be bitter of soul anymore. So I was saved, but I was bitter. I was angry. I, st I still get angry. I used to get real angry. One time I got so angry, the pastor's brother cussed at me and I punched him in the face. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be a Christian, like turn the other cheek. I slugged him in the face. I said, and, I, and this is when I knew I was not the same because I actually felt bad about it. Before I'd hit you and dance. What's up, fool? This time I hit him, I cried. Why am I like this? Come on, I was changing. I was changing. And my leader came up to me and said, Jason. He said, he said Jason, you can't, you can't be like that. I said, I know I don't know how to change. 
That's all I know. I'm bitter. I'm bitter of soul. I'm like David's men. And he says something to me that day. It felt like Mike Tyson hit me. You know, you get hit by Mike Tyson, that's another level. It felt like that. But like he hit me in the stomach. And when he said that, he said, Jason, you need to forgive your father. I was like, whoo, took my breath out. I was like, whoa. The room started spinning. I said, whoa. He, he saw it. He's like, go ahead and go in that room and forgive him. And I got on my knee. And I let it go. And then the Lord's like, yo, step daddy. I said, oh, Lord. That took a while because there's a lot of things he did to me. And I had to forgive him. And then the Lord said something to me that shocked me. He said, you need to forgive your mother. Well, my mother's here. She prayed me in. So my mother's like, to me, it's like Jesus and my mom. You know what I mean? So it's like, you could talk about my daddy, but you talk about my mama. No, come on, somebody. But, but it, what it was, was he would abuse her, put a gun in her mouth. Not Dwayne. So don't go looking mad dog and Dwayne. He's a good man. Come on, that's my dad now. God blessed her, restored. Amen. But he'd put a gun in her mouth and say, if you go to church, I'll blow your head out. He would have. He'd shoot the gun in the house just to see how many walls it went through. And, but my, he said, when you were a kid, you, you felt like she chose him over you. Well, in a way, yeah, because he would have killed her if she would have chose us and left him. So I had to let that go. And then all the people who abused me growing up. And then the X's and the O's. And there was a lot of them. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you act like, I don't know what he's talking about. And then the Lord says, now you, have, you need to forgive you for all the things you've done. And I had done terrible things. I said, no, God. He said, yeah. I said, I'll let it go. And that night I went to bed. I slept good for the first time in my life that I could remember. No nightmares, nothing. I woke up the next day. God is my witness. For the first time in my life, I could see color. That red dress, that red shirt, your red hair, I could see yellow. I couldn't see it. I was in, I was in bondage. I was a Christian. I was talking in tongues, but I was in bondage. And, and I had to forgive and let it go. And then I had to learn a lifestyle of freedom. Well, you, it's not just forgiving once. Then I had to learn how to forgive everybody all the time. So now it's hard. To, you could get me mad, but by the time we walk away, give me like a day, I won't even think about it. Why? Because I ain't going back to Pharaoh's house. I ain't going back to bondage. I've been bitter. I'm done with bitter. I divorce bitterness. And some of you, you're, come on. This is the first step that you're going to say, I divorce bitterness. I'm walking away. I don't want nothing to do with you. You hurt me. You jaded me. You try to come and ruin my new relationships. I am done with you forever. He is a chain breaker, church. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to worship for a moment. People are going to get touched. But as we forgive, it's a journey. That's why in Lifestyle of Freedom, we take you through a, a weekend called an encounter. And we take you through this journey. Because you're going to need help through this journey. You're going to need somebody to guide you through this journey. Because some of you have been dropped for real. Some of you, he left you with all the kids and you ain't never seen him again. And that, that's painful. But mama, I'm telling you, your days of freedom are here. You're in the right house at the right time and the right place. And we know what you've been through. We know what you've gone through. But when God gets done with you in this cave of Adulam, your days of distress, your days of poverty, and your days of bitterness have come to an end. And I declare over your life freedom in every area of your life. I feel like we need to worship. I need everybody to lift your hand. I mean everybody. Close your eyes, both hands, both hands. And just right there, right there. If you have to forgive, then forgive. If you have to let go, then let go. Right now, right now, don't wait, don't wait. Everybody, everybody in the overflow. That's it, that's it. If you need freedom, I'll save it. Sing it, Aubrey. He's a prison shaking savior if you got changed. Sing it again. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, 
Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.